Paul was shot with an entire load of buckshot real close in the middle of his chest. One in a million people can walk away from that. He had a nasty flesh wound, guys. Doctors said that if he would have received medical attention, he'd have been fine. Entered the center of his chest, slightly anatomical left of the midline. Under the skin, did not even penetrate his lungs. Exited under his arm. Arms up, like getting robbed, right? Entered the underside of his arm and exited the outside of his arm. What does that tell you? His arms wasn't up. That's the window, guys. You can still see some of those pellet defects. The defense asserted that he had his arms up. Well, shot that part down. The entire load, like I said, entered his chest. The wad was actually protruding from his chest. You could take your fingers and pull it out. It was just lying there. It started to spread. We had visible wounds, exit wounds, and possible exit wounds. Do the math, guys. Pencil sketch, out of respect, but do the math. That's the outside of Paul's tricep bicep, an artist's rendition of it. Nine pellets. There's the window, seven pellets. Y'all remember it's a cone? I'm, I'm not up here to degrade anybody, guys. Uh, expert for the defense said, you know, I bent down and peeped through the hole, saw where it hit the pine tree. Guys, this was a quail hunting preserve. Any quail hunters out there? <laughs> Any bird hunters out there? <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, you know that shot pellets do not travel like a mama duck with the babies behind them, right? They spread. That's why they call it a scatter gun. Okay. Well, we got seven here, and we had a large portion of glass broke out of the bottom, so probably all nine exited. I placed those footprints there in that photograph that I took. It shows Paul's approximate location in the room so you can see how it entered the midline and exited the anatomical left side of his body. These are original photographs. You see the shot shells behind the door. Something interesting. I get people all the time, and I, look, everybody can have an opinion. You don't have to agree with me. I'm a big boy. Used to be a lot bigger. Paul's touch DNA was on the back of those shells. If you heard the testimony, touch DNA, guys, not blood. What does that mean? means Paul loaded that shotgun. means he loaded it. The shotgun that took his life. Anybody that hunts quail knows that the law, you can only have three shells in the gun. But also anybody with gun discipline knows you don't carry around a loaded gun in your car. So that takes us to what? Two. Even by Edisto math. Two. Two. Two shells. We heard testimony that when Paul's truck was in the shop, his 300 blackout, his shotgun was down at the kennel somewhere. Several of his friends testified to that. Those shot shells had his touch DNA on it, guys. They said, how did he get under the door? They couldn't get under the door. Look, almost two inches of clearance under the door. <laughs> Like I said, post told digger, you don't need one to tell you how they got under the door. <laughs> These are original photographs, guys. There's the blood spatter at the top of the door. And I've got circled a pellet defect. That is from the original scene. When I went, it had been pressure washed and cleaned. I had to find something to orient myself. You can see that defect. See it in the original door? Right there right to the top of the corner of that panel. And that's the direction of the spatter. Now the expert said he was on his knees, he was shot execution style from the top down. Okay? From top down. Guys, his brain was ejected. Pellets were in the roof of the feed room. Now I'm gonna tell you, I'm a country boy. Born with a shotgun in my hand. But if I got one that shoots back at me, I'm getting rid of them. All of them. All of them. 
There's a defect, guys, in the original photo. There it is in my photo, plus some additional defects. You know, these people say, oh, so and so and so and so and so. Look, you can't argue with the evidence. The door's still there. Everybody said, why didn't Paul slam the door, lock the door? Paul was a little, little guy, but he was bigger than four inches. He could not shut the door. Don't know that he tried, but he could not shut that door. We got less than four inches between him and that shelf. There it is, guys. That's the direction of the shot pattern. I don't care what four experts that got paid way more than me from out of town said. That's the direction. Newton's law, object in motion, right? Y'all remember that part? Going to re remain in motion? Okay. Yes, 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 Mr. Harpootlian, I know there's two numbers on a protractor. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. Yes, I measured from the door frame sideways, but uh, kind of shocked him when I pulled one out of my pocket. <laughs> Here we go, guys. Like I said, pencil rendition. You can see the blood spatter, and you can see the yellow arrow. Those are Paul's footwear impressions. They were uh, identified by the original sled agents, and I verified them. They're correct. Those are his footwear impressions in his blood. So he had to free bleed for a moment before he did what? Step in that blood. Remember, he's got a superficial wound to his arm. His arm's going to be down. Where does the blood go? See, they tried to make this thing really, really difficult. Smoke and mirrors. If you think about it, you could have solved this. Not that difficult. If a dummy like me can figure it out, it's not that difficult, guys. You can see him. They're round. Them blood drops are round going to the door. They're not directional. They're round. That means the source is walking really, really slow. Okay? If he was moving fast, you'd see a direction in that blood. Kind of like a reversed sperm. That makes sense. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. Reverse sperm. There's his footwear once again. That is a void area. If you look at that blue line I've placed in that photograph and that red triangle, those are void areas. So that tells me he was not in the door, but just barely past the door, his head. Think about it. Think about throwing liquid around a corner. And that's the way you have to think about this when you see that projected blood those impact stains. That is body tissue, hair, bone, lipids on the top of that door frame. I put those feet there, guys, just to show you. That's approximately where Paul was standing. That's where he dropped. Remember, his brain was ejected from his head. There is no more movement. Instant, you fall like a bag of potatoes. So how could he be out on his knees and get executed if his feet are still in the feed room? Think about, you might trip, stumble, the older I get, the more I do it. Sometimes Friday nights, I do it a lot. <laughs> but think about it, his feet are still there. No evidence he was moved. That's Miss Maggie, artist rendition once again, guys. Look in the background. What do you see with the two headlights? Look, I love my sled brothers and sisters. They overlook this. I've never worked a crime scene in my life. I got in the car and went to leave and said, man, I did everything right. They had a lot of stress on them, a lot of people meandering through their scene, a lot of powerful people. Not the kind you say, get out of my scene, okay? But I saw it. I said, hmm, look at that side by side, that Polaris side by side, right there. Look on the front of it, guys, when I zoomed in on their photographs. You see it? Body tissue, blood, body fluids. Very sharp investigator. I'm going to give him credit because he's my boy. Ozzy works for the AG's office. He said, 
You think we can prove this is a tire impression on Miss Maggie's leg? I said, well, let's take a good look at it. I looked at it, I said, this is a tire impression, no doubt. No doubt. The defense was going to say, I'm told, that that was a footwear impression, that the killer stomped Miss Maggie's leg to make sure she was dead before he left. This is what they put together. Even white people don't wear this kind of shoe back in the 80s, you know. That shoe has long been gone. They were prepared to testify to it, guys. I think this was my best work. This is really the only thing I can take credit for. Right there. That's Miss Maggie's calf. You can see that impression. Dr. Reimer said she didn't see an impression on Miss Maggie's leg. Dr. Reimer did. She documented it. She had it in her photographs. Okay, it was there. I didn't make this up. She just didn't remember. She didn't remember. There are the tires. Look at the tires. What else do you see? See body fluid on the tire? That kind of drew us there to that tire. And those are the specific lugs. That one with that top blue arrow. Right there. That's it. It matches the height. It matches the shape of that bruise on Miss Maggie. But they wiped it off, guys. Remember, Miss Maggie expired real quick. You know, you've got to be alive for the bruise to form. So the blood did not have time to get purple like you and I. What they were looking at was actually dirt off of the tire. Well, I don't know, I've done 250 of them, guys, but at autopsy, they wash you. They washed the impression off. There it is. I had to, I had to reverse it. Kind of like when you're riding down the street and you hear a siren and you look behind you and the ambulance is behind you and you can read ambulance, right? You look at it face to face and it's backwards. You got to reverse one or the other because you can't see through a leg and you certainly can't see through the tire. So I reversed the impression. I honed in on the tires and here we go. Here we go. There are actual unique random characteristics in that tire that were transferred to Miss Maggie's leg. Guys, this is what it's all about. Worked my whole career. Made, you know, dozens and dozens, maybe hundreds of fingerprint identifications, couple shoe identifications. Never made a tire. Never. Wanted to do it something terrible. Still couldn't do it. Remember, we didn't have a scaled photograph of the tire. So, I said, I'm a buy tire. I surfed the internet, got to the end, started over. Found a tire. Only problem is, they made a 9 inch, a 10 inch, and an 11 inch. And I don't know what was on this side by side. So the best I could do is call it, uh, I could not call it to the exclusion of all others. I called this a class identification, which means either that tire did it or another tire just like it. I had it peer reviewed by another competent examiner who has the same level of experience as I do, and he agreed all day long. There's eight different unique random characteristics that transferred from that tire to Miss Maggie Murdoch's leg. It wasn't a shoe, guys. It wasn't a shoe. These are, these are the steps. I stood on these steps where Paul, his friend, testified that they test fired that rifle. They took a hot hands and put it down on the trees, because remember they had a thermal scope, and they honed in on that hot hands. So your shell cases kick out and go where? In the flower beds. What did SLED do when they were there the first day? They looked down and what's in the flower beds? All right, I told you about the shotgun, right? There's some haters out there, there's some people that say, oh, it's blah, blah, blah. look, you can't lie, you can't fool science. Paul's touch DNA, well guess what? These shell casings match the shell casings at the scene. We don't have a projectile. Projectiles were damaged. Y'all, y'all, as my grandmama said it, y'all goggle it. You'll figure it out. <laughs> shell casings just as good as a fingerprint. Tool marks. Very competent. Firearms examiner, Mr. Drew, 
at Sled, soft-spoken guy. He said these were loaded and unloaded from the same rifle. Come on. Beyond a reasonable doubt, not all doubt, not some doubt, beyond a reasonable doubt. We know that both weapons were Murdoch weapons. There's the T-shirt, guys. There's the T-shirt. First time I've said this, I'm going to say it right here, Crime Con 2023. If this isn't blood spatter, somebody got to tell me what it is. I couldn't agree with it. Tell you why. The original expert said that the chemical that was used by SLED to confirm blood and the chemical that's used by the crime scene investigators don't work together. They caused a, a bad reaction, which caused a negative, negative test. No dog, no dog poop, right? That's the way Kenny thinks, post hope digger, that's the way I think. You can't have blood if it, you can't have blood spatter if it tests negative for blood. I don't know where the hiccup there come from, guys, but you can see it. You can see it on that shirt. You get it two ways. You get it from a gunshot wound. We're talking about blood more than 100 feet per second and less than a millimeter. You get it from a gunshot wound or high-speed machinery. Stick your finger in a metal fan and you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hairspray, the ladies. I ain't got much, but the ladies, hairspray. When you spray, that's what it looks like. It's really, really fine. Look at the shirt, guys. I told Creighton, I said, look, you're the boss. I'm working for you. My advice is put this thing back in the closet because I'm not getting on the stand and saying Tide and Clorox don't work together when 96% of the time the empirical evidence says it does. I wasn't going to do it. Couldn't do it, guys. Jack the Ripper or Alec Murdoch. 